Hi there, Jean Pakinen here from SewTreasure.com with another short video to introduce you to my second fabric bowl pattern called the Goodness Bowl. This Goodness Bowl has a deeper shape and is constructed using English paper piecing techniques but substitutes stabilizer for cardstock, which makes the bowl even more wonderful, flexible, and washable. Now, Let's talk a little bit about making a set of master templates. What I love to do is take the pattern page and print it onto cardstock, which is just heavier paper, or transparency film. I buy the transparency film at the office supply store, and it's just wonderful if you'd like to do some fussy cutting with your, for your bowl. So, here's what I would do. Once I make the templates, the next step is to trace it onto the pellon. Now, I use the word pellon because that's the brand name, but really it's it's a white sew-in stabilizer that's about it's over a millimeter thick, maybe even maybe even under 2, between 1 and 2 millimeters thick. And it looks like this, this white stabilizer. It's Pellon Peltic 70 Ultra Firm Stabilizer. It uh, has no grain, it's washable, it's, it's absolutely my favorite, and it's what this pattern was designed to use. Now occasionally I will use a, if I could find a medium one, I would use that as well, but there is a thinner one, um, the Pellin 70T Lightweight Flexi Firm Sew-In. It's also washable, and I use that on some of the smaller bowls, and um, I just ease it to fit. So... Once you find this amazing um, stabilizer, what you want to do is take something like a fine pen um, and trace around the shape onto your pellon. So for example, you would do that. You want this to be fairly accurate because this is what you're going to be covering, covering with fabric to make your bowl. So you would trace one of those and six of these onto your stabilizer. The next step you would do is cover your shapes. Where did I put them? They're here somewhere. Here they are. Cover your shapes. So basically, let's say I wanted to do a fussy cut. I could do something like this and take a sew line, air erase, like a fine line, air erase pen, and I could trace around it. These lines disappear. You could trace from the front or back. Sometimes you can't see through the fabric, so to trace from the front to get your design. Or simply, here's your cardstock one. You could do that on the back, something like that. To get an idea where you want to cut it out. Or, you can simply put, put this right on, whoops, put this right on here, the shape, and cut out, leaving approximately, oh, I don't know, three eighths to a centimeter, maybe a little more, half inch or more, 12 uh, millimeters on a, with a thicker stabilizer or bigger bowl. You want to have enough seam allowance to be able to fold these over and have them stick down. So you will end up with something like that. Okay, now here's my favorite thing to do because it's really fast. I take some old photocopy paper. Here's some stuff I'm not using. I put it down. I take my little glue stick just from the office supply store and with the edge, I go like this. I put, where's a little stick here? I put glue all along here, 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 and all on the seam allowance and then fold them over like this one edge at a time Oops. this way I can go right onto this paper I don't don't uh, glue up my work surface and then I move the shape down put glue across the oh my gosh it's a big hunk there fold it over getting a nice neat corner you want this snug to your shape so it's accurate and you just keep going around moving it whoops, so that you're not getting glue on the front of the piece until you're completely um, finished. It would look something like this when you're done. Okay, and then for this one, 
the, the, the thing that I like to do here, oh my God, let's get a new piece of paper. Do that. Where is the shape? Here's the shape. So let's say I'm putting this one on. To get a really nice top edge on your finished bowl, what I'd like you to do, and I suggest doing, is to do the ed the sides first. So for example, we're going to go here. Oops, so hard to do this. Uh, to work while filming with this short distance between the my phone, which is dangling, and the work surface. But basically, if you can see what I'm doing here, pushing it over like that. Yeah, whoops. Let's see how it's nice. Get out any like that. And then do the other side. Whoops. Just use your edge of your glue stick. Boom, 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 boom. And then again, kind of holding it over. And you want these to stay stuck down. If they aren't, add more glue. It's really nice when these stay stuck down and it doesn't all fall apart. So I've done both sides first, which makes for a very nice, beautiful top edge on your bowl. See what I'm doing there? And I'm folding this down here, pressing, turning, moving my paper. I love using both sides of photocopy paper so I feel like I'm not wasting so much paper when I do a photocopy, but really press it down. Now, I don't know if you can see that. I'll put that close up. It's coming up a bit there. See those edges? Will be really nice. I feel like I need more glue there. Pull it really down. What I do then when I made, uh, I would take this, this finished one and six more, six of these, and I would then press them on the front and back with a pressing cloth, and they're all ready to go. Next step is sewing them together. So here I have some that are nice and dry, and you simply fold them right sides together, matching, sort of centering them on each other. Then I take my single polyester thread, I do a little knot by wrapping it around my needle, like that, and then I just do a small, do small whip stitches to sew each, oh, that is, it's hard to do on a, without, without my glasses on. I'd have to switch the my strength of glasses. So what I want to do is show you when I'm starting, I always go in and then just to lock it a little bit more, see that loop I have there? I go in through my loop and it does a nice little lock and then I whip stitch tiny stitches all the way to the end and then do another one of those little loop knots or knots on the end to keep it really secure. But I'm just catching, hopefully this is in focus, the edge of the fabric and a little bit of the pellin, and I'm taking the tiniest little whip stitches, nice and neat. It's kind of soothing to do. When I go really crazy and <laughs> can't wait and want to finish my bowl in a in a in a day, sometimes I put little uh, band aids on my fingers so that I can have gr better grip, um, and and still place this exactly where I want. So it would go all the way to the end until it's completely sewed, sewed on like that. And then you would add them around like that. All right. Let's say you've got all your side panel pieces sewn onto your center piece. This is a, I think this is an extra large bowl or large bowl. So the pieces are a little bit bigger. And what would you, you would do next is sort of bend it or fold it over, matching these side panel pieces like this. And matching the top edge here you could even use um, a super clip to hold it if you wanted and then you're going to take your thread and you're going to sew whip stitch from here to here um, small whip stitches and you're going to do each one of those what I like to use is on on a multicolored fabric like this is something like a medium gray colored thread it hides beautifully. Um, I often, on different, maybe lighter fabrics, I choose a light peachy pink. 
it also seems to work really well. And of course, you can use a matching thread if, if, they're, if it's not so multicolored. Some people even like to use invisible thread. I, I tend to like the feel of regular thread and I like to, to kind of see the stitches and show that it's hand stitched. But anyway, you would do the same sort of thing. You would have a little knot. You would start here, go through, do that same little trick to lock in, whoops, lock in your, hopefully this is showing, do that little loop and go through. So, so you can you can have this nice and snug. You can make your little stitches, pull them tight, especially if it's polyester thread, it tends to break a little less, less easily, but cotton works as well. Nice, small whip stitches all the way down. And then when you get to the end, all the way down here, do two, some little back stitches. Go right to the end so you'll end up with this beautiful top edge when you open it up. And do a couple, like I would do two knots or a circle knot and, and do a couple secure um, stitches to secure it really, really well at the top, okay? All right, the last little tip I'd like to show before I show you some of the bowls is how I finish off, let's say we've, we're just sewing the top edge of the two bowls together. What I would do when I'm finishing, do my nice little stitches on top and I do that same little circle knot and I pull it down close to the edge so you can see it there. And then I would go between both bowls and pop that knot through to finish my end, then I would just cut off that thread so it doesn't show and your bowl would be done. Now, here's a few bowls I want to show you. Here's a little mini or dolly size bowls. I used um, the thicker stabilizer here, but you could use a thinner one and just ease the two bowls together. I think they're really cute. Here's one I made with antique fabrics. fabrics. I used a way too thin, I think, it's quite thin. I think I would like to do this bowl again in a thicker stabilizer, but I still like it. This one was made with Liberty Fabrics. This is a small size. This, this one is shown in the pattern. Just love it. Similar colors on the inside and outside. This one's sweet. It has a little fox, a little fawn, a little owl. Here's another one with a beautiful little fairy fabric. Isn't that sweet? Little bunny sewing one. Here's a medium sized bowl with a butterfly fabric. Quite like this fabric. Here's another favorite fabric. I call this one the mushroom bowl. These bowls are getting bigger. This one is on the pattern cover. I absolutely love this fabric. Stunning and the inside's very colorful too. Now everyone knows I'm a sucker for vintage Valentines. Isn't this bowl sweet? I think this is a large bowl. Now I made this one because I love this apple fabric. It's quite a big bowl. I did the outside thinking it would look like wood. I'm not crazy about it. I think I like more pattern, but it's very bright. And here's a super size one. It's so big. I don't even think it'll I'll be able to show it under, under this camera setup, but that's an idea. Now I hope you have a lot of fun. You could you could personalize things here. I love chocolate and berries, so I made this one for myself. Something like this could be really cute for a birthday party. Uh, this one I thought would be nice for someone who like a little yarn bowl or someone who likes to maybe knit. Oh, little fabric on there red and this one you could do a statement this is like it's got flowers on the outside and bees on the inside it was sort of a statement like save the bees get it <laughs> all right I want to show you there's other things whoops sorry bump the camera um you know if you're a really good sewer I don't even really know how to do these but you could put a, a bias kind of rim on your bowl you could also do like a I took a strip of stabilizer and I covered it. I don't know if you can see this. I did that. I covered it in some fabric to make a little basket. Oh, how do I show this on here? 
like that. And I did try, oops, sorry, I did try um, washing it. I threw this one in um, a bowl of soapy water. I wrung, wrung it out. Then I let it just air dry and it came out not too badly. I, I was surprised based on what I put it through. I mean, I don't tend to wash them, but I just wanted to see if they were in fact washable. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, this video. It's not meant to show you everything, just be a companion video. The full details and links for everything that I'm, you know, describing are, are in the pattern. But if you would like to contact me, this is my email, jean.pakanan at gmail.com. Of course, you can reach me through sotreasure.com. And also, I'd love to see a picture of your bowl, or you can see other people's bowls uh, if you're on Instagram with the hashtag so treasured fabric bowl, there'll be pictures there. So I hope you'll give it a try. They're super fun. They come in seven different sizes and I don't know. I just love making them. All right. Bye for now.